Hello there, my name is DJ Beachball. Today I will be talking about the three, three levels of gratitude. Now, as we go down these levels of gratitude or up, they get harder and harder. And throughout this video, we will explore what makes them harder, how you can use these different levels to integrate into your life to improve your relationships with yourself improve your relationship with the people around you and life in general. And as you are able to challenge yourself to ascend up these three levels of gratitude, your life will improve in many aspects. Your relationships will get deeper, more meaningful. Yourself, the relationship with yourself will get more clear and meaningful. And the relationship with life will become a lot more easy and you will feel life flowing through you and life will begin to work in interesting ways to help you towards your mission in life, your purpose, and fulfilling those purposes in ways we would never expect. I started on level one, as all most people do. Uh, it's very rare that you just pop out and starts on level three, but level one is an attitude of gratitude. And this is a simple practice of creating a habit of gratitude. My first habit of gratitude was the five minute journal. It was recommended to me by Tim Ferriss and he talked about how he was in a depression like I was during the first uh, time I heard of it. Um, I was uh, ending some uh, intimate, uh, ending a, a relationship I had. I was dropping out of school and I felt really lost. I, my acne was coming back and I was having a lot of resistance with life and therefore I was having a lot of resistance in my relationships and I wasn't in a good spot. I literally stopped going to school because I was so depressed and sad and weak and lost. And it was the lowest time, one of the lowest in my life. And it was in that low point where Tim was explaining his own battle with depression and coming out of it in one of the th the things he was recommending was a gratitude journal. And he had one called the five minute journal where in the morning you write down three things you're grateful for and at night you write down three things you're grateful for. And what this does on a neurological level is begin to strengthen the neural pathways for gratitude. Now if you don't feel very grateful for life right now, this could be a sign that you're neural pathways for the emotion and sense of appreciation and gratitude are weak. And just like you can go to the gym, strengthen the muscle, one day you're doing five pounds, a month later you're doing 20 pounds, you can start like how I did, like how Tim did and many millions of other people have, where your sense of gratitude feels weak. It feels like I can't really feel it. However, integrating a daily practice of in the morning and at night, listing the things that you have to be grateful for, as small as an interaction with some stranger, as large as a gift, a huge blessing in your life, acknowledging those things, writing them down in the journal, starting your day with that neural pathway exercise, and then ending the day on the same note can go a long, long way. This one habit in my own life cascaded into a bunch of other blessings in my life that probably would have never happened if I hadn't started in that one first level of gratitude. Now, this first level is with yourself and only yourself. It's a practice you do intimately with yourself and that brings us to level two, where you start sharing that gratitude with other people. Level two is expressing your gratitude. 
being a leader, energetic leader within a group or community with one or many other people. This is acknowledging your appreciation with the, clo with the people closest in your life, with complete strangers, and this is an act of leadership combined with gratitude. When I first moved to California, I lived in a house with eight other people. And in this house, there were a few times where there were conflicting arguments, uh, disputes with different people in the house. And I saw myself as a leader of gratitude in some of those situations. So if two parties were going at each other and it seemed like it wasn't coming together or diffusing, I used gratitude to get back to a heart place center, diffuse the situation. And this comes in the action of just expressing your gratitude. It was this particular situation I was thinking of was between some of my roommates and the, the, the lease holder, the person that was on the lease that kind of brought everyone else in. And there was some dispute about something I don't remember, but I do remember taking a moment in the heat of the tension, taking a deep breath and acknowledging, hey, like I know this is really difficult, but I, I really do appreciate you letting us into this space that you have leased out and this is your space that you have welcomed us into and i just want to generally from my heart to say thank you for for doing that it's made a big impact in our lives and regardless of the situation i'm gonna do my best to you know adhere to whatever requests were made and um, besides that i just want to express my gratitude uh, for you for letting us into this space and what I always notice is people are people reciprocate and Instead of it becoming a whole tension war it was a sharing of gratitude and her response was I really appreciate you saying that I know this isn't easy and I'm sorry if anything was like if I could have been done anything better I'm, and I was like yeah I guess I'm, I'm sorry as well if I can, could do anything better and it's my intention to, to make things better and thank you for saying that. And, uh, it brought it back to a place where it's heart-centered and productive communication and relationship can be built upon. So that's level two of appreciation and that's with you and one or more other people. And the reason it's harder is because so many times you'll see yourself try this next time you have the opportunity to use gratitude. You'll notice part of you is like, oh, I don't know if I want to open up because it's vulnerable. It's you're becoming vulnerable. But what we perceive as being vulnerability can really be a superpower because it's bringing us back to the heart where you know anger and frustration sadness can all be in those lower centers bring it back up to the heart and that's where the real productive conversation can be made however it won't always be easy well it doesn't stop there it gets harder level three for the power of gratitude is living as if you chose it this is a concept that i learned from eckhart tolle where he says, I'm paraphrasing in his books, where he says, in each moment, accept the moment. Accept the present moment. Live it and accept it as if you chose it. Accept it and live it as, you, as if you chose it from a higher perspective. Now this is the hardest because it requires some degree of ego death. And this is the one that even some masters and spiritual people that have been doing it for many, many years will still find themselves, whoa, like my ego really 
can really feel invested in some viewpoint or perspective on a certain situation. So this has happened many, many times with me on my journey. I would say the biggest one that I never saw coming, but I lived it as if I chose it, led to me getting a new work opportunity that came with housing when I had no work and no housing. I was going to be homeless and I ended up living in a garage for a little bit and I had no money to get an apartment or even get a car to live in. I was pretty at the end of my rope. Uh, this was three years ago living in LA for two years. I had been living in LA for two years, being fired from every job, not every job, but every like accounting job. Um, but throughout the whole time, I, whenever I got fired, I took it as what is life teaching me? And I always le learned some profound lesson after each one of these things. But one of the major ones was I went to go I spent my last $500 on getting, uh, for signing up for a physical personal training certificate uh, where I would go uh, personal train people at Equinox. And I spend my last $500 on the uh, certificate class and then I spend my, then I like go work Uber or something and spend another $200 that I didn't have but made on a Airbnb because I had to go drive uh, to about an hour and a half away and spend two days at this thing and I had no car so I had to stay down there anyways I didn't end up passing the personal certification and I'd spent all my money I was like now I don't even have the job to go make my money back so a friend, the same friend who linked me up with the Inquinox training gave me another lead to a property management company. And this property management company, I was doing the lowest ranking position there, basically anything from files to grabbing lunch, doing a little bit of entering in accounting and this is around the same time that I started doing the Dr. Joe Dispenza meditations and this was the, for the first time I was meditating for an hour or two each day and I would meditate I would do the blessing of the energy centers meditation where I would basically bless each one of my centers for absolute peace I was just like I was I did the meditation to just try to feel as good as I could during the meditation. And about two weeks into the like basic whatever they needed to do job at this property management company, the CEO walks out of the office one day and is like, congratulate or yes. They said, yes, we just got a new client. Now I just need to find someone that wants to live in a studio apartment. Dang. And ultimately, um, I ended up, be the next day, I go into the uh, CEO's office and I say, I really appreciate you, um, hiring me to do this uh, this uh, office job however if you think I would be good at this property management position and being the live-in manager at this new property that we'll be managing I would love the opportunity to do it um, at the time I was since I was gonna be homeless by this time I was living in a friend's garage and um, they ultimately, I walked out of the office and they announced me as their new property manager. Now, throughout 
this whole time of not getting the gym uh, certificate, being uh, living in a garage and working this bare minimum pay job. I kept a faith throughout the entire thing where I was living it as if I chose it. I didn't know why, but that's the key. You don't need to know why. And it ultimately led to me being a property manager, getting an apartment, and fast forward, starting my own property management company and being able to do a whole bunch of other cool things within real estate and property management. And it all came from living it as if you chose it. Now this is this one story out of many and this is my challenge to you is the next time something comes up where you're not satisfied, your ego is not satisfied with what is happening, think to yourself, hmm, I wonder why I chose this experience. And I bet you will come up with some enlightening answers, perhaps something you've never thought of before. Let me know if you have that experience, come back, comment, and let me know what level you're on and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.